Hey guys, how's it going? My name is David Nates, and today we have a very special guest, my oldest, oldest friend, Imran Siddiqui. We're in England in a city called Reading, not Reading, it's spelled Reading, but you know, anyways. Anyways, he's uh, one of my oldest friends. Well, actually, my oldest friends. We met when uh, I was six years old in first grade, and he was in kindergarten. I was. Pre in preschool. I yeah, was. Yeah. We had a, he invited me on a play date. And it was my really? first play date. Yeah. Was that yeah. it? Yeah, because your mom came to my mom and said, hey, Imran wants to invite David for a play date. And that was really cool. Oh, so okay. So that's how our friendship started. So it's thanks to our moms, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you exactly, go. Exactly. Forced friendship. <laughs> Forced friendship. But uh, Imran uh, is a very talented musician. We, we had started playing music at the same time when I was a teenager. And uh, he wasn't even a teenager, almost a teenager. But... Um, what happened was that he was really talented and I was not. So he kept on <laughs> going into the whole mu music industry and uh, now he lives in uh, England and he's a sound engineer and he plays for, he's played for various, various bands mm -hmm. and now his band is Joy Opposites. Mm -hmm. And uh, would you like to explain how you guys started and how you guys actually rehearsed because that's really interesting too. Sure, sure. It's, uh, uh, forget to look at the camera too. Okay, I was, <laughs> I was gonna ask. How does this work? <laughs> okay, uh, hi everybody. Um, like David said, I play in a band called Joy Opposites. It's a band that's based in Japan, which doesn't make a lot of sense considering I'm based in England. Um, it's I think it's made even stranger by our mutual backgrounds. We grew up in Belgium of all places, and have somehow found ourselves like in the far flung corners of the world. <laughs> Um, but the Japanese band, like I worked in the music industry for like a really long time. I was managing a Japanese band called Fact mm -hmm. at the time and uh, they broke up a couple of years ago and half of those guys started a new band and they asked me to be involved because I had been playing the band for like the longest time. Um, and honestly that's kind of, that was kind of it. It started like, as like an internet based project so we're like writing over the web really. Again like with emerging technologies now it's just mm -hmm. it's so much easier to get stuff like that done mm -hmm. and I guess we've kind of moved away from that traditional model of you know spending days or weeks or months all locked up in like a practice room um, we can share ideas like instantly mm -hmm. over the net it's super easy to do and I think you know the software like garage band now which mm -hmm. anybody can you know mm -hmm. literally pick up and just start playing and writing like immediately like you don't have to have mm -hmm. a background in you know audio engineering to, to be able to, to make that sort of software work. So um, yeah, I think you know we're able to do this band because of the ease of mm -hmm. modern day technology. Yeah. Really. Yeah. yeah. So so they basically send you the, the sound stems and stuff like that and then you get you get to rehearse your stuff on it yeah. and then you, you guys get to send it back. Pretty much dude. Pretty much, yeah. You yeah. get to do maybe some Skype sessions too, stuff like that. Yeah for sure, for sure. Like um, my main writing partner is our singer Adam who's uh, actually from Manchester. He's not mm -hmm. Japanese himself. But he's lived yes, in Japan for a while. Yeah, yeah and I've, I've seen him obviously in music videos and right. stuff like that. Right, there you go, yeah. Um, so he's been in Japan for like the longest time. Uh, shout out Adam. <laughs> um, but basically what we'll do is that, like he's like my main writing partner in this. I will get some music down, like I'll program some drums, write some riffs, whatever. Mm -hmm. Send it over to him and he'll get like the majority of like the vocal parts written. Mm -hmm. He's excellent coming up with like melodies and harmonies and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, he'll send stuff back to me, maybe some more guitars. And like, you know, bit by bit we kind of piece it together like that. Okay. Yeah. And, and what about the, um, the, whole, the the thing that you recorded and uh, you've recorded an album in LA too at a really yeah. prestigious studio. I mean, I have to say that was definitely one of the highlights of not even my career, but like my life. We <laughs> did a record at uh, Studio 606 in, uh, it was in Northridge. Uh -huh. um, this was with the Japanese band, which I opposite. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the studio that's owned by Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters, basically. Mm -hmm. Did, did you get to meet them? Or were um, they, they there? Their bassist was there on the first day. Oh, he was awesome. hanging out. It was okay. a funny story. We were we had a little break for for lunch and we were sitting upstairs, like all chilling and stuff. And I remember just going to the kitchen for a second and I came back. My bassist was just sitting there at the table, just having a chat with us. And it's funny because like our drummer at the time mm -hmm. had no idea who that was. And he just chilled for like, I want to say like an hour. We had like the best conversation. It was cool. Got up, we checked out some of our music, and he was like, this is cool, guys, keep doing what you're doing. I was like, we will, thank you. And our drummer was like, oh, you seem like a really cool dude. I was like, do you even know who that was? Mm -hmm. He was like, no. <laughs> I was like, you know, Foo Fighters basis, it's all good. He was like, what? His face went red, he could not believe it, dude. Like, it was That's super so awesome. good. That's yeah. so awesome. I mean, yeah, the, cool. the, 
just whenever you're in the acting world or the music world or whatever it is, you're gonna end up meeting all these people and stuff like that just because it's such a small world. Right. And right. It's just awesome to be able to interact with people that maybe you looked up to. Um, yeah. As a child, but um, I wanted to ask you. Um, so, uh, what advice would you give for people who? Because uh, I feel like acting music is, is, is it's, it's artistic, you mm -hmm. know. Like, what advice would you give to like an aspiring musician that that just wanted to make a career out of out of music? Because mm -hmm. I know I know that even though you've played in bands, you also do all the sound engineering for other mm -hmm. people and all that. Like, do, do you think it's important for them to to go to school? Is is it important, or is it just more important to just go into it and and, and put as much hard work as they can mm -hmm. into it? So 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 like, what advice would you would you give people? Uh, on this subject, hmm. um, it, it's a great question, dude. It doesn't have, you know, a very direct answer. Obviously, like everybody knows the basic tenets of like, mm -hmm. you got to work hard, you got to be disciplined, you got to make it a routine, do mm -hmm. it every day, you got to put in the hours whether you want to or not, whether you're working a dead end job, mm -hmm. which most, let's be honest, most people trying to make a yep. life for themselves in the arts are usually working crappy side jobs, you yeah, know, yeah. you just have to do what we've all like been even there. Even some of the bigger bands, right? Because oh yeah, absolutely. Because you do hardcore metal and stuff and, and, and like sometimes le, le, like even though you might have a label, you might be touring, you think that you're actually getting paid and living just off of that, but oh, yeah. you actually have a, <laughs> sure. a day sure. job too, which it kind of sucks. That's the thing, like the, the work never ends and the thing is it should never end because you should be doing something that you love and if you're not loving it and if you're not ready to put in that time and sacrifice, don't do it. Do something else. You know what I mean? Like, I think, but I think very quickly the people that are not in it for, let's say, the right reasons, they get caught out and they will drop out, you know, sooner rather than later. So I guess my advice would be don't bow too much to social pressures these days. I think that's like one big issue that a lot of people do tend to face. Mm -hmm. The idea that the clock is ticking, mm -hmm. that I have to make it by a certain age. You know what I mean? Like that's... That's what we've definitely all gone through. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, for me, like with Asian Pakistani heritage, it's something <laughs> that I've definitely experienced quite a lot. You know, we have you have to be either a doctor or a lawyer mm -hmm. by the time you're 14. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, it's like it's yeah. like if, if <laughs> there was a joke in Goodness Gracious Me, the, the British series, where where the guy was saying, "Hey, he told his mom, I want to be an actor," and the mom said, "No, it's pronounced doctor." That's right. That's <laughs> right. right. <laughs> that's a classic. That's a classic. That's that's so good. That's so that's good. Definitely. It's so true. Like, it's the it's the old style where, where where you know you were married very very young, had kids very very young, like you had a set path, a thirty year career and stuff like that. Where stuff has changed. And right. We've talked about that many times, and, and obviously we have this pressure, but but things are changing now, mm -hmm. and, and also with the whole social media and all that, you yeah. can create your own content mm -hmm. and. Look at this, you have a studio at home. Mm -hmm. Like back in, in the 80s, 90s and stuff like that, you could have had a couple things, but, but right. creating your own stuff. Like nowadays, weren't you saying even that sometimes it's better not even to have your own label and to just self-produce and, and Pretty much, like, I mean, have your own label. You can put yeah, I mean, records yeah, out yeah, yourself. But not yeah, going yeah. for like a, exactly. a, a very popular label because yeah. they might screw you over because they might have a band that actually you never sounds know. like you too. You never know, most <laughs> labels do, so. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, but no, yeah, so it's the idea of like, you know, not necessarily conforming to traditional models of, you know, like when it comes to music, like having to release a, a record through a label, for example, you can do a lot of that stuff yourself nowadays, you know what I mean? Uh, but just having that self-discipline and that drive and determination to know that regardless of what's going on in my life, regardless of what age I'm at, you know, gender, ethnicity, uh, you can do it. You can do it. You know, you don't have to be form basically exactly you know? yeah which, which is very important um on a side note like mm -hmm. if you have any um like uh tour experience that that you'd like like I, I mean obviously you've toured a lot and all that stuff and is there maybe like some some cool like little story that you could tell like maybe like like a cool experience that you had on stage or, mm -hmm. or because you know the the whole performance is like especially with like 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 hardcore and, and all that you mm -hmm. know just the whole crowd surfing and there's 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 this whole this whole energy you know mm -hmm. and, and the whole like mosh pit thing where it, it's not it's all violent but at the same time there's so much love <laughs> sure. between the people and sure. there's this whole like straight edge movement and all that, that stuff which is Absolutely. which is which is really cool because it, it kind of goes with like whoa this music is kind of like whoa it's it's so yeah. extreme sure yeah, there's so much love so much respect between the people and 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 like do you have maybe like a a cool story or or just even just like your experience like mm -hmm. performing in front mm -hmm. of all this 
like rage, but at the same mm -hmm. love. <laughs> One thing that I think that's is really cool is that you know I've, I've toured like in all sorts of bands. It's not really just been metal and hardcore. But, like recently, the Japanese band is more of a it's more like a rock band, just you know. And so we don't really get like a lot of mosh at our shows, like in Japan, in any case. But one really cool thing that I've like noticed about um, performing in different territories, like internationally and stuff, is just observing crowd participation um, and how different it is depending on like where you are. Like I think European, like Western crowds, tend to kind of react in the same way. Like you had that sort of mosh, you had the stage dining, like you're kind of your the sort of things that you'd expect at at a show. In Japan, though, it's entirely different. It's it's a whole other world. Like it's really okay. cool. Firstly, one thing that I love and I found it quite unnerving, a little bit strange at first, was people are so quiet between songs. Oh, it's like, obviously they'll applaud, like, very politely, very respectfully, which I love, it's really <laughs> cool. Um, but you could hear a pin drop. Oh. It's crazy, dude, yeah. I, I guess but it's another sign of respect, right? I think so. <laughs> they really want to hear what you have to say, but it's super cool. strange, because you'll be standing on stage, and you can hear yourself tune your own guitar, even if there's no sound coming through. Which, that, I mean, it's a weird little thing, but I've never noticed that anywhere else in the world. But, um, you know, I went over for the first time um, a couple years ago, went to this festival that our friends FAC were putting on, it was their own festival. It was in this really big, like, 10,000 cap arena, which was super, super cool, and it was sold out. So it was like 10,000 people there, you know. So again, when they were playing, they were like the headline act, it was chaos, you know, like loads of kids, like moshing, like, you know, stage diving and stuff but it was so neatly organized and orchestrated. Kids would like crowd surf to the front, uh -huh. get pulled over by security, and then in a neat single file, run oh. all the way around, neat single file, no one's telling uh -huh. them to do this, uh -huh. and just get straight back into like the pit and just do it all over again. Awesome. There were kids in the back doing like orchestrated rowing, which was uh -huh. weird. There were some doing like, Okay. Yeah, like a choreographed dance they just invented themselves. Yes, I, I heard that uh, that in that in like especially for like in Asian countries and stuff like that, they, they really love this whole like choreographed thing. Oh, so they yeah. cause even if they're not like real dancers, they're able to participate. Sure. And there's this whole like shy thing and all that, but then they're able to get out of their show, yeah, which is awesome. For sure. For sure. Which is awesome. So it's 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 just really cool to like observe the cultural differences mm -hmm. of places. Um I would love to tour Asia and just that side of the world a whole lot more. Like I've not really been to China yet, mm -hmm. uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, and all. Yeah. Like I've not experienced shows there other than yeah. like what I've seen on YouTube. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, and, but yeah. I think there's a big difference between the Japan, China, and all that because oh, they all massively. have like different. I think China would be much less organized. <laughs> <laughs> it's just different, you never know. Different, you never know. Culture. Yeah. True. Yeah, true. Absolutely. Uh, now, just on on the final note, mm -hmm. um, what do you have upcoming? Like, what what are you working on? Um, um, is there? I know there's some. I, you've told me some pretty exciting things. Mm -hmm. Whatever you can share, that that's you can mm -hmm. share is cool. But uh, like, what's like your next step, like in, in your career, that, that you think you, you wanted to head yeah. head towards in the next um, year or two? Or whatever? So one thing that we're definitely working on at the moment is we have a new single coming out. Show opposites mm -hmm. uh, it's coming out this Friday, 13th September. Mm -hmm. I don't know when you guys are going to be watching this video, but it's 2019. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so it'll it'll be out. When it's, the, it, well, there you go. It'll probably be like. Well, there you go. So you can yeah. hit pause right now and go listen to it. Yeah, yeah. And we'll, we'll be sure to add the description and the link for you guys to, to check out. The, yeah, it'll be, it'll be in the video probably, but it'll be in the description below right. for sure. Sick. And, uh, and uh, yeah, like leave a comment to him too. Like let him know that, that you guys enjoy his interview. Please do. And that you enjoy his music and, and definitely support because we, we need this community to support this stuff. And, even if you don't enjoy it. Yeah, even if you, you don't enjoy it. Yeah, you can also hit the dislike button, which is really cool. Yeah, you know, like, do that. It's just like do interaction. That. Like if people like stuff, people don't like stuff. It's cool because at least, you know what they say about art? It's it's about giving an emotion. So even yep. if it's love or hate or whatever it is, as long as I create an emotion within whatever I'm doing, yep. that's art. So I'm happy totally, dude. I'm an artist. I we <laughs> love reactions. Exactly. The worst thing is to be indifferent about anything. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. Anyways, um, well, thank you for uh, giving me this interview. Thank and, you. Uh, it's always awesome to to see you, buddy. But, yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, like he—he's my brother. Like we, we absolutely we, we grew up together. Absolutely, and, and uh, I'm so happy that that we got to do this. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's it. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and leave a comment. And check out his stuff in the description below. He's—he's he's good. He's—he's he's super, super talented. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye.